Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Live at 5 o'clock, the city of Detroit's big time plan to try to stay ahead of this COVID spike and the mayor's controversial comments about what's going on with COVID in the suburbs. We have ditched the damaging winds, but we may pick up a few flakes tonight. Find out how much snow to expect by tomorrow morning. All right, Ben, but we begin here at five with the coronavirus and the numbers from the weekend. 12,763 new cases over the past two days, which averages out a little more than 6,300 per day. Also, 55 more Michiganders have died from the virus in the past 48 hours. And in just two days, Governor Whitmer's new restrictions for the state go into effect. Let's quickly bring you to the key points on this. The restrictions go into effect Wednesday. It includes remote learning only for high school and college and the closing of indoor dining services, movie theaters and casinos. It also puts the brakes on all high school sports. Now, Dr. Robert Gordon, Michigan's health department director, is the man responsible for implementing those new COVID-19 restrictions. And tonight he's telling Michigan we should expect a vastly different Thanksgiving than the one we're used to. He believes there is something good on the horizon, though. Rod Maloney spoke with Gordon this afternoon about how these views, how he views these latest restrictions, and Rod, just how bad are things in his view? Yeah, very. Uh, he said essentially on the case number level, the sheer case numbers, he says that is totally alarming. And in the meantime, what he's saying is as we look toward Thanksgiving, he believes everybody in the state of Michigan needs to change the plans that they may have had. I think people need to really minimize getting together with people from outside their own homes inside. I hate to say that it is painful. It's painful for me personally uh, as a father of two, but I think every time you're inside with folks not from your household and particularly in a setting where people are taking off their masks and eating, which we all know is what Thanksgiving is all about, uh, there's just a lot of risk associated with it. One of the reasons for this is what Gordon characterizes as community spread, increasing hospitalizations. And Gordon tells local for the difference between now and last spring is COVID's presence has changed dramatically. Right now it is all over the state. It is everywhere. We are seeing deaths begin to rise to the levels that we saw last spring. And the numbers of cases we are measuring are far higher than we saw last spring. Gordon believes this three week so called pause over Thanksgiving should help bend this new curve if it doesn't expect tightened restrictions. But he's optimistic because not one but two vaccines appear to be effective and believes they will be a large part of ending this pandemic crisis. I think that means that there is hope on the horizon. This does not have to be forever, hope we're going through now. But, but because there's the hope there, it's all the more critical that we. we we do uh, do the hard things right now because if we do those things, we're going to save thousands of lives. Now, one of the things that Gordon points out is there are still a lot of things we can do. You can work. Most of us stores are open. You can go outside and enjoy the outdoors, even though it's getting a little bit chilly out here. Uh, but he says essentially what everybody needs to be doing is masking up and also making sure you don't do gatherings indoors no matter where you go. Back to you and Rod probably kind of presumably here, but how is Michigan's legislature reacting to these new orders? Yeah, I, not well. Um, they are deeply concerned about whether there is some legality involved in this. They're questioning that uh, that's something that could end up happening in terms of heading to court. But there's a whole lot more at play here. The dynamic is uh, not good up in Lansing and coming up on local four news at six. We're going to take a closer look at that. All right. Look at the cooperation level for sure. All right, Rod, thanks. Well, Governor Whitmer is firing back tonight at a White House official who called for Michiganders to, quote, rise up over the new COVID restrictions. So he's doing some of his own backpedaling right now. Yeah, in a tweet posted last night shortly after the governor's announcement, Dr. Scott Atlas said, quote, the only way this stops is if people rise up. You get what you accept. Here's what Governor Whitmer had to say about that tweet. Right now, we need leaders who can pull us together and get the politics out of this public health debate. Um, I'm, I'm incredibly astonished by, um, you know, the, the rhetoric, and yet it's not going to uh, dissuade me from following the best experts that we can in order to keep people safe. That's my job, and I'm going to keep doing my job. 
It was just about a month ago when the FBI uncovered an alleged plot to kidnap and kill the governor. Well, Atlas later pulled back on his original statement and said his tweet was in no way meant to incite violence. Well, from the state's response, we turn now to the city of Detroit. Mayor Duggan giving up his own update on where things stand for the city in its fight against COVID-19. And while Detroit's numbers remain relatively low, Duggan says the surrounding suburbs and out-of-state areas are forcing the city to take immediate action. Sean Lay live this evening at the Williams Rec Center on the city's west side with the very latest. Sean. Let's get right to it because the mayor had a lot of information for Detroiters. He says they need to stay one step ahead or more steps ahead of this virus and spike. Williams Center, you know it right here on Rosa Parks. Free testing with an appointment. He wants people to come and get tested. Also, ramped up testing in nursing homes. That starts tomorrow. Health department and police out more looking for offenders, including in schools with $1,000 fines. And then listen to this. The mayor had this to say about what's happening with the spike in the suburbs. City of Detroit businesses are being shut down now because of irresponsible behavior in the surrounding communities. Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan mincing no words. He says Detroit businesses under the governor's orders have to shut down and he is blaming the behavior of people in the suburbs. Since late October, positive COVID rates are skyrocketing in Oakland and Macomb counties. The numbers in Detroit are low in comparison. What we were seeing was behavior in the surrounding suburbs that in my mind was completely irresponsible. You just drive through into the suburbs. You're seeing people out without masks. In the city of Detroit, by and large, our folks have taken this very, very seriously. Detroit's higher at 6.8 percent, but look what's happening in the surrounding suburbs. Wayne has more than doubled to 12.6, Oakland uh, upwards of 13, and Macomb at 17 Oakland County tells us large gatherings, traveling sports teams, people not wearing masks are the reasons for their spike in cases. If it goes another month and nothing changes, it's going to double. You're going to be at 26% by Christmas. Oak, Macomb, you're going to be over 30% by Christmas. Mayor Duggan's words about the suburbs heard loud and clear in the suburbs. A, a county executive Dave Coulter heard them in Oakland County, got on the phone right away with the mayor. Details of that call not being shared. County executive in Macomb County, Mark Hackle, just sent me this statement saying, early on during this pandemic, the city of Detroit led the state in the number of COVID cases and deaths. At that time, no one within the region blamed Detroit for what they were going through. Rather, we all wanted to find ways to help the city. Mr. Hackle says he's disappointed in the mayor's comments. The mayor's office says this is all about getting people in Detroit tested. Even if you don't feel bad because you still may be positive, he doesn't want those folks going to work, school, businesses, or gatherings and spreading the virus without knowing it. Back to you. All right, thank you, Sean. Starting Wednesday, the Washington County government will be closing its non-essential services to curb the spread of COVID-19. All offices that have the ability to work remotely will be doing that for a period of three weeks. The move is in compliance with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services order. Now to the election and a lawsuit aimed at invalidating results in Wayne, Ingham and Washtenaw counties has been dropped now. That lawsuit claimed the results were fraudulent. Meantime, President-elect Joe Biden spent today focused on the economy, while all while the Trump team refuses to release funding for that transition. Alice Barr is following that part of the story tonight from Washington. Alice. Jason, President-elect Biden is setting his sights on an economic recovery today, trying to look past transition hurdles. But the longer the delays go on, the more ground his team is going to have to make up, especially urgent in pandemic planning. President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris meeting today with labor leaders and the CEOs of top companies from General Motors to Microsoft, stressing the need to control the pandemic in order to kickstart the economy. We want to get the economy back on track. We need our workers to be back on the job by getting the virus under control. In a critical step to getting back to normal, drug maker Moderna announcing early data shows its vaccine is more than 94% effective. It's now the second company to show such promising results. And getting the vaccine and a vaccination, though, are two different things. 
The sooner we have access to the administration's distribution plan, the sooner this transition would be smoothly moved forward. More people may die if we don't coordinate. Vaccine distribution will be a monumental task. And with President Trump still refusing to concede and offer help to the incoming administration, medical experts are raising the alarm about potentially damaging gaps in the handoff. We're essentially passing a baton without stopping running. I mean, you just want things to go very smoothly. As President Trump keeps making false election claims, including that he won, his national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, sending a different message. If the Biden-Harris uh, uh, ticket is determined to be the winner, and, and it's, you know, obviously things look that way now, uh, we'll have a very professional transition from the National Security Council. Despite the mixed messaging, Wall Street rallying today on the vaccine news, while Main Street businesses struggle to stay afloat until that news becomes reality. It's expected that about 20 million high-risk Americans will be able to be vaccinated by the end of the year, but it will likely be late spring or summer before the doses are widely available to the general public. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice. By the way, we're going to have much more on the results of that Moderna vaccine ahead at 530, including the special role Henry Ford Hospital played in making sure the vaccine worked for everyone, no matter their skin color. Meantime, that preliminary data from Moderna lifted expectations of a strong economic recovery, causing stocks to jump. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and S&P 500 index closed at an all-time high. Stocks that would benefit from the economy reopening, like United Airlines and Carnival, led the way. Higher shares of companies that have thrived during the pandemic, like Netflix and Amazon, did struggle. Still a whole lot of cleanup to be done after yesterday's wind. Right now, DTE says about 108,000 customers are without power across the region. Currently, the company has more than 1,500 crews out in the field. It expects to have the majority of customers back on the grid by Wednesday. Lucky enough for us, that wind has managed to die down, and the sun's even out today, Karen. That's right. Let's send it over to Ben. Yeah, Karen, as we lose that sunlight, temperatures going from the mid-40s to the 30s tonight. And that means transitioning rain to snow. We'll talk about how much we're in for it coming up. All right, Ben, and putting the brakes on high school sports right in the middle of the playoffs. New tonight, why coaches say they still have hope they'll be back on the field soon. And here's Hank. Restaurant owners already really now getting ready to enforce new rules that will affect the bottom line, how they'll be able to survive financially. Coming up tonight in my Help Me Hank report.